Hi, my name is Phil Elaine, and my definition of relentless is when you find a passion for something, you just power through it. Whether it's uh, whether it's your children or, or, or a dream, you, um, you just realize that uh, that you, you you form that ability to be relentless when you really are truly uh, focused on something. And I believe relentless stems from love. And, and uh, once you have love for a project, love for a person, love for for an individual, kids, whatever, um, you'll find your your ability to be relentless. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Relentless Podcast. I'm Kyle Dubay, and I am really, really happy to be here in studio with a, a local yet not so local artist because this guy's kind of all over the world has done some incredible things mr phil elaine is joining us thanks for being here phil it's it's my pleasure we are going to get into a lot of your career we're going to get into a lot of things that are going on in your life and 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 all around the arts and i am going to um just absolutely amaze you and the listeners at how much i do not know about art (laughs) because i know nothing about art. i'm the least artistic human being i think i've ever met well, that, that you know what every artist is is uh, is always learning too. So welcome to the club. So okay, <laughs> so you're saying that there's an artist in everyone. Absolutely, yeah. And that's uh, do you really believe that? I really do, and I I think that it it's kind of taken away from us as children that uh, hmm. that after uh, you know you you actually watch it like because I do workshops with kids as as young as uh, well as young as three four years old sometimes mm-hmm. all the way up to adults and and uh, the um the if you put a piece of of uh, paper in front of a child with brushes and everything they immediately start to paint and they don't even they don't even ask you what they should do they just want to just get busy and do it right and as as kids get older they 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 stop and they think a bit more it it comes like a they're 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 either hesitant to to what they should create or they um they start to worry more about what other people are going to think of what they create and then by the time you reach adulthood um i mean if i say to you um hey do you do artwork and the odds are you're going to say Oh, I can't even draw a stick, man. Yeah, which is the, the most common thing that we hear. I from said a, it to you yesterday. You did, when we talked. and I hear it all the time. And and the truth is that that's because people um, at a certain age they they just they just don't believe that they can do artwork anymore because they're so fearful of of what others will will think of what they do because um, it, it, it's just kind of like it becomes a peer pressure thing almost, or they just uh, they just feel like like it's like singing. Like sure, probably everybody sings in their car at some point. I'm unbelievable. I bet you are <laughs> with that deep voice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yes. But uh, I, I think that uh, almost everybody will sing in their car or in the shower or whatever. Um, but will they sing in front of their friend? Never. Yeah. See, I'll sing in front of my friends and they <laughs> beg me to stop. Now it's interesting because this is about insecurities, really. A lot of it is. That's yeah. what it is, right? Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about you then. Let's talk about your journey as an artist. When did you fall in love with this? When did you realize this is this is something I love doing? And did you have those insecurities or th- they were just never there? Well, I, I I guess everything, like I'm an athlete more than I was an artist. Like okay. I, I, uh, I was heavy into hockey. I was heavy into football. Yeah. Uh, everything sports related, like up until I was about 11 years old. Um, and then, of course, uh, when you're in school, you take all the other subjects. And, and uh, I started doing artwork. And when I was doing my art, uh, I had a, a teacher that just said, you've, you've got some talent there. You should, you should try to do more with it. So, um, so she just encouraged me to, to draw. And, uh, and I loved football. I was, uh, I was a running back in the, when I don't even call it a, it's real football at that age, but yeah, it, it yeah. felt like it was to me. Sure. And because it was at that age. It was, yeah. 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 And, uh, and I was pretty decent at it. And, and I just loved drawing football players. So, uh, I just started doing that. And then, then, um, my friends, uh, you know, they, they're all, they were all in the sports and they saw what I was drawing. Like, Oh man, can you draw this guy? Can you draw that guy? So I, uh, I started drawing more of it. And then my, my teacher encouraged me to enter some contests and, uh, I was lucky enough to win. And, and from there on, I just realized that, Hey, I, I have another ability here. And, yeah. and, uh, um, I was very hyperactive <clears throat> as a kid. They wanted to medicate me, <laughs> but, but my, my parents wouldn't allow it. They just said, no, no, he, he's, he's fine. He his, uh, his crazy energy is good on the sports field. So we'll sure. leave it. But, um, when I started to do my artwork, I, it was actually the first time where I would actually stop and, and, uh, and just, just be focused and, and just draw and draw yeah. and draw. And, and it, 
it became a wonderful place for me. You'd get lost in the the artwork, so to speak. Like you, basically, yeah. Like right. like I, I was the kid dreaming of of being that professional athlete, but I was drawing my heroes and mm. and uh, and it was a it was. I, I mean, I still remember it was a pretty pretty fun time in my life because, um, you know, you you just like I, I remember the the I, I studied the equipment, I studied the the positions of the players' hands and uh, the running backs. I just loved running backs and and um, and then I started getting into hockey and doing all the hockey. And it, it's amazing you you literally were were bringing your heroes to life right in front of your own eyes. And, right. and uh, every time you drew another picture, you're like, going, "Can I make it better?" And and uh, and in your friends' eyes, you were becoming a hero in some ways. So it was a uh, um it wasn't through the sports that i was becoming the hero it was through my artwork so it was it was fun that's a pretty cool way to look at it i i i again zero artistic ability for me and i know you guys say, well no everybody has it but, <laughs> but i really don't believe i do i also don't know if i have a desire to do it right you know what i'm saying like yep. it's it's like playing a musician i i truthfully i wish i could play the guitar no desire to put the time in or right. the efforts to learn um, I have people that say, well, you can still learn. And I go, nah, I'm just too lazy. Yeah. Like, I, it's just not my thing. I'd rather listen to somebody else. I don't understand the way that an artist's brain works. Uh, Louis Lavoie is a good buddy of yours yep. and a good friend to, to You Can You Services, the organization I work for. He comes and does live paintings at every one of our comedy nights. Huge hit. People look forward to it every year, seeing what this man's going to create. And... I look at you the same way I look at him, where I don't understand how this can go from your brain onto the canvas. I, I, it, it just doesn't compute with my brain. Is can you explain the process, or is that like really hard to explain? Well, well, I, even just between Lewis and I, uh, I can't explain his brain because the, he does things. He thinks in a completely different way than I can. And, sure, and I do as well. And and and, uh, um, I, I don't think I, I think. You know, when you talk relentless, or, or uh, I think if you have a passion for something, you're going to find a way to make it work. Like right. it, it just is; it, it's just the way it goes. So, um, I, I know I know that Lewis and I had very similar um, childhoods, where um, where doing our art was was almost like a, a um, I don't want to call it a hero stamp, but I mean, it definitely gave it gave you credibility, gave you some st status. St yeah, there you yeah. go, status. It, it you know <clears> so. Uh, so let's just say if you were having any difficulties in school or were just trying to find your place, there the place was was found. And and uh, um, you know if you weren't the most popular kid, all of a sudden there's something that people are are going, hey, we need an artist. Who can we get to do it? Well, let's get Lewis or let's yeah. get Phil. And, yeah. and it, it became something that that uh, so well, it made you cool. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it does. It, it I mean, it, it gives you some and, and it gives you confidence. And 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 then um, once you start creating, you 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 learn tricks and you learn patterns or, or, or ideas. And you, you're always looking at other artists work and figuring out what, what maybe you could incorporate into your style. And, and uh, um, like an athlete, because if you look at, at championship teams, they don't have just one style of player. No, they have exactly. all these different types that lead to a championship. Essentially. That's what you're saying is artists are like that. It, it, it's, it's very comparable. Like even like I had a friend who, uh, who would just watch YouTube videos day after day of guys doing shootouts because he just wanted to be better on breakaways. Sure. And I'm thinking, God, I would never do that. And I played <laughs> hockey my whole life. And yeah. I, I was like, I just don't have the energy to spend studying that. Like, I'm going to go down and make my same move every yeah. time, and get stopped and go back and pout. <laughs> but he, he um, you know, it, 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 it's just like if you're passionate about something, you're going to try to find a way to, to get better at it. And I think that's, um, that's probably how most artists' brains work. If they see something that, that inspires them. They're going to try to incorporate that into what they do and, and, uh, and take it to another level with what, what they can do. So. I don't want to give away too many of your secrets, but what is your shootout move? What is your goal? <laughs> <laughs> it's been so long since I've done one. Of <laughs> you going backhand or forehand? No, I think I always go forehand. You I go think forehand. I, I, I go right, then go left and, and flick it up. Yeah. <laughs> Stay to, stay, and, and, shoot it wide and, yeah usually yeah. wide off the crossbar yeah. or usually right into the goalies nice, so, yeah. nice. <laughs> so what does inspire you in regards to art like let's let's go back to okay now we're gonna say you're whatever you're 17 18 maybe you're in your early 20s are you starting to make money as an artist now like what, what was the first piece you ever sold well first was, was a hockey player I, okay. I my first my first art piece i ever sold was uh actually Pelly Lindbergh. 
Oh, wow. Uh, Philadelphia Flyers Philadelphia. goaltender who died right. in a car crash, right. I want to say in 85. Yeah, it was right around there. Yeah. yeah. And I sold it to uh, uh, a good friend of mine who I played uh, midget uh, hockey with in St. Albert. And, and uh, I mean, St. Albert people might know Biff Jones, but uh, his mm, fa- his yeah. family uh, purchased the artwork off me. And uh, I'm not even sure why if they were big fan. I think it was before he passed away, too. I just can't mm. remember now. But um, anyways, it was, it was at that time that I kind of realized, oh, you can actually make money off of this. Right. Can um, I ask you how much you sold it for? Uh, I, I think it was fifty bucks. Fifty bucks. Like, I, I don't know. It just seems like. But I, it must have felt amazing. Well, it did. That somebody wanted to give you money, like to have this transaction for this piece of work that you put so much love, effort, like you loved it, you're passionate about it, and someone said, "Let me pay you for that." Yeah. Well, I, I think even more so than that was when I started winning contests because mm-hmm. I actually, uh, uh, I think I, I probably should say my first sale was uh, I, I did a. Uh, a piece of artwork. There, the Edmonton Journal had a contest, and uh, it was, "Can you draw draw something for Halloween?" Yeah. So I was like, "Oh yeah, whatever." So I did this charcoal drawing of this torture chamber. It was a. Uh, it was quite uh, quite horrific to me. <laughs> quite quite different than hockey players, yeah, football players. So yeah, and, and I did it, and and, um, and I got a phone call just before Halloween saying that. You know, you've won two hundred dollar. No, I won an Atari, an Atari, which was pretty spectacular. That is awesome. <laughs> yeah, so, so I, uh, I was like, wow, you're aging yourself. Now. Yeah, I know. I, <laughs> <laughs> but the, they were so good. They were then. awesome. Pong was great. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, after I won that, uh, and my my artwork ended up on on the uh, brunch section of the front page of the brunch se- brunch section of the journal, so section C or something. Sure. Like that. So I was like, "Wow, that was awesome!" I, I won a contest. It was the second contest I had won, um, but it was it was more exciting because in the in that, like back then when people read a lot of newspapers, it was really cool to. Um, so they had another contest at Christmas time, and I thought, "Well, I'm going to enter again. I'm not going to win because you're not. You, what are the odds you're going to win two? Mm-hmm. So I entered it again, and on um, on Christmas morning, uh, I wish I could remember what year, but it's probably like eighty one or eighty two. I um, <coughs> I woke up. To uh, to the Edmonton Journal on my on my doorstep, and the whole front page of the Edmonton Journal was my art. And so there wow. it is, like this. How old were you? I was fourteen, I think. Wow, fourteen or so. And uh, it was just such a like more so than any any dollar figure. It was just like fact there, like it was my art on the front. Like I go to the school after the break, and uh, and I was like the 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 hero, you're a legend. Oh yeah, I was like my art was like everybody yeah. everybody had saved the paper. They're all but, coming yeah. in because <laughs> that's whenever people actually all got the paper. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was um it was pretty exciting. So uh, um so I, I was you know and when then when I sold that other other artwork uh, to the Jones family there, um I started doing it much more frequently and mm-hmm. people were commissioning me and things like that and uh, but really the the reason why I even s- stuck with the arts is because of uh, of hockey. So, so I actually, uh, um, uh, in my twenties, I was asked to go play senior hockey up in Northern Alberta. Okay. So I went up to, uh, to Fairview, uh, just a little town in up by Peace River there. Yeah. And, and I played in the NPHL and, uh, Fairview hadn't won the championship in like 50 some years or something like that. And they haven't won it since, but I went up there, had the most spectacular season. I, I, do you remember Bub Slug, the cartoon? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so Bub Slug was playing and. Every time a like Gretzky would shoot the puck, it go in off Bub Slug's butt or whatever. Yeah. Like like I I felt like Bub Slug because yeah. everything everything I touched was going in. I don't I wasn't a goal scorer and and uh, the the playoffs we were just a just a dominant team and we ended up winning the championship and I ended up winning the MVP of the playoffs. Wow! Which if anybody knows me as a hockey player, I, I am not a top goal scorer and sure. I'm not going to win the MVP. But uh, but for some reason I did that year and um, and while and all the games were broadcast on the radio. And one of the radio broadcasters said that not only is uh, is Elaine an artist on the ice, he's also an artist in real life. And you can see his artwork at uh, at one of my friends had a restaurant in town, and so you can see his artwork at, at this restaurant. So people started going to this restaurant just to check out my artwork and started putting orders in for for different commissions and things like that. Oh, wow. And uh, and from there it it, it kind of took off. And um, and at the same time, I ended up getting a, uh, a hockey scholarship. I'm 25 years old, and I got a hockey. Sc- I feel like Fred Flintstone now, going to <laughs> going back to college. And uh, um, and I went to Grand Prairie College to play in, in the um, ACAC there. And and we were we were god awful. And and um, I ended up blowing my knee out in the first couple weeks of the season. Um, so I was I ended up going back and taking fine arts. And and from that point on, um, my art career kind of took off. 
like I, I, uh, I was, what were you doing prior to that? Like, were you in school? Were you working? I, or I actually, well, I, I, uh, I had gone to school. I had gone to U of A for a couple of years. Um, but, uh, I just, I was not a student. I actually, I broke my job playing hockey three times and, and twice while I was in university. And so I missed a, so a few, you weren't a good fighter. No, well, <laughs> none of them were fights, believe it or not. Like everybody almost says that. But I, I just didn't know when to duck when sticks were coming. Glass jaw Elaine. That was my down. name. Yeah. That was totally my yeah. name. <laughs> so, um, so anyways, I, uh, because the university just wasn't working for me, I, uh, I ended up getting a job with the city of Edmonton Okay, and, uh, and I always took the early layoff in November and I, I do my artwork on the side and go play hockey. Yeah. And, and, uh, um, so that was kind of my, my life at the time. Like I thought, wow, that's a pretty good life. Make good money during the, you know, from April till November and then go play hockey. Sure. And it was, it was wonderful. And, so, so let's go back to that question around what inspires you? Like back in those days, uh, you talk about the sports and all that type of stuff, but now people are, they're commissioning you. Yeah. They're saying, Hey, can you paint? whatever can you paint the, this beautiful um scenery in my backyard or can you do a family but like what are people asking you for and uh, as an artist are you able to go nah i don't paint that or do you go sure i'll paint it and do you get what i'm saying like yep, yep. well and that's where like so i i would do it was mostly sports okay i i had uh, i had some people um commission me to do uh, memorial pieces and things like that okay which was uh which was another one um, but after a while, I, I just, I just didn't want to do that anymore. Like I, I, um, I just did not want to take commissions anymore, even though that's what majority of artists will do. Uh, I just didn't want to be doing what other people wanted. I want to do what I want to do. Sure. And, uh, but, um, but my, my art career actually took a huge, a huge swing, um, after I went to college because I, um, while I was going to college, I, I had my first gallery showing. And, uh, and a lot of the artwork I was showing was commission work and things okay. like that. Um, so, but I lived in Grand Prairie and there was, I had, didn't really have any friends there except for the guys that I played on the hockey team with. So I had to, uh, I had to invite people to the opening. So who was I going to invite? Well, all my hockey buddies. Which if, if I can stop you, when I hear Grand Prairie, I, I don't right away think, oh, the art mecca of the world. And then when I hear like, you know, all these senior men's, hockey players i'm not thinking these are all like the you know art artiest people well that, ever met. that's exactly that's exactly it so so this wasn't even senior hockey this is college hockey so okay. i was they called me gramps because i was a 25 year old sure. and they were all like 20 and 21 yeah. years old kids right well, like, so, how's it going dad yeah exactly yeah. so so uh i thought well i have to invite somebody to my events or my show so who i invite all these kids basically to yeah. me i mean now they're i mean they're yeah. adults i guess but um so anyways they, they all because they're they're friends, my buddies on the team, they all came out and they all walked around quickly and looked around, but they're like going, um, is there any drinks? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, well, there's you can get a glass of wine. Like, where's, yeah, where's the Ryan Coke? Where's the like, beer? Yeah. So they, yeah. they basically walked in, walked around, and and you could just see they were all uncomfortable because it was in a gallery setting and they just sure. didn't know how to behave. And I mean they didn't they, they didn't have to behave anyway, just look at the artwork and appreciate it. But yeah. But there's this, there's unfortunately a stigma sometimes that's attached to galleries that that uh, which I, I witnessed this uh, especially in Grand Prairie at the time. Um, I thought, well, this is really really weird watching this behavior and how they just felt like they couldn't look at art yet, yet they do it all the time when it's not in a pressure situation. It's just they just felt a little uncomfortable because of this the environment. So um, after that event, I decided to um, to create a different type of art show. Which is um, when I started up my uh, what I do now. It's called Night of Artists. So I, I actually booked a hall in St. Albert, the community hall downtown St. Albert, yeah. and and I uh, instead of doing an art show in the gallery setting, I um, I I made it a party. I hired a DJ. I uh, had my uh, my sister sing. My bro um, one of my best friends play piano, and uh, um, I served dinner and and made it just a big. You got to buy a you ticket to come. Beer. Yeah, had, oh, I had everything. <laughs> so, yeah. so, and I put my artwork up all around the perimeter of the room, and and um, and everybody came. Like all, like 160 people packed yeah. the hall or whatever. And I sold more artwork than I've ever sold in my so life. So what you essentially did, though, and again, that wasn't a slam on Grand Prairie. No, no, right. What my point is is that that I guess that's the beauty of art is that people can appreciate art from wherever they come from, whatever their background. Absolutely. Is. And so you go from this Grand Prairie to doing this in St. Albert where you were raised and, and, and part of that community. But what you essentially did was you, you made it cool. Yeah. Well, I mean, you I tried mean, to make a gallery experience 
a little more hip, if you will. Like you just wanted people to come out, have more interactive, more engagement. Well, and, and also just take the take the pressure off because I think that getting back to the, uh, you know, where you come from, like why people don't do artwork anymore because if you, you almost feel like you have to walk in and know everything about art to look mm -hmm. at artwork. If you're if you're put into that environment without, um, without it just being there, kind right. of thing. Um, so they didn't come there thinking they had to they had to know anything about my artwork. They came thinking they're going to have some fun, and Phil's artwork will be there. And um, and I realized that that that's what I needed to do is I needed to take the uh, take the pressure off of of art viewing and make it more enjoyable, um, so that people when they do go into a gallery won't feel like they had to know anything. They just right. can appreciate artwork. And right. uh, and I think that and I've been doing this now for twenty six years, and um, and I think that. Uh, um, that I've literally shown artwork to thousands of people that maybe would not even have ever stepped in a gallery that are now going into galleries because they just love looking at creations by especially people in their own community. So it's, mm -hmm. it's pretty fun. I'll say as a guy who, who truthfully, until I met Louis Lavois, I did not have an appreciation for art. Mm -hmm. I didn't. And then seeing what he's created and seeing some of your stuff as well in our community, right? Um, and after knowing Louis, just knowing wow, like I, I, I do appreciate it. It just blows my mind. And the beauty that can come out of, of these pieces of, of artwork are, are so meaningful mm -hmm. and can just really touch a person deep in their, in their, their softies. You know what I mean? Like just really get in there. What is, we're going to, we're going to get to a night of artists soon. Cause yep. I, I think that that's an incredible thing to talk about and how, what you have spent the majority of your career now is helping other artists get showcased, which I think is amazing. But what, what are some of your favorite pieces you've ever done that you just knew? Um, I mean, there's one thing where it impacts you as an artist and, and I'm assuming, I, again, I'm assuming a lot of things here. I'm assuming you still have some of the first drawings you ever did. I'm assuming that you've kept some of those pieces along the way because they're so personal to you. But are there some that you've done where you know that it's just really impacted the person who, who bought it or you gave it to or, or something like that? Hmm. Um, well, I mean, I, I, I drew my mom and dad for their anniversary, their mm -hmm. 25th anniversary. So, of course, that one was pretty special. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like, like sometimes as an artist, you, 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 you just remember once you just feel like you nailed it kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Like it's it like I did one drawing of Wayne Gretzky that, uh, that if I tried to, uh, to do it again, I know I couldn't, it was just, sometimes it just flows into the, you know, um, I have one art piece that I did. Um, uh, it, I, I called it a warm up drawing. I, I, I'd gone up to, to live in Wabasca for uh, a few months to hang out with a buddy of mine who was teaching up there. And, and uh, I did this one drawing in like two hours to warm up before I did all my other artwork that I was going to do while I was there. And, uh, um, and it just went perfectly. Like it was like a two hour creation that, that, uh, that I made prints of that I've literally have sold probably like 400, 500 prints of this thing wow. since I created it. And, um, I, you know, you just art, art just, you just never know which one is going to be your, your magic. You can sometimes have an idea for something in your head and you just can't get it on the paper or sometimes, um, what you have in your head is, is, is um, risen or it, it's gone up a notch from what you had even visualized sure what, what just comes out of you that particular day so which again is amazing to me how you visualize it in your brain and then you put it onto a canvas or a piece of paper like that to me is the part that blows my mind mm -hmm. which i think is incredible um when you get in the zone so you're talking about these in particular these two that you just talked about are you in this zone where there could be like you know chaos going on behind you a building being demolished like are you can you even hear it or are you just in the zone uh well i mean for me i i i'm a i'm a pretty like i don't like high intensity music i, I listen to mel I, i'm a deep introspective guy all the time always thinking about stuff and uh so when i'm painting a lot of times uh, i don't even think about anything that i'm doing on the canvas like i'll be i'll be thinking about uh um life uh you know how, how the world works uh, like it, it's like i'm complete i am in another zone but it has nothing to do with my artwork a lot of times hmm. um you know it's it's i don't know if it's an add thing or whatever but it you know um the only time i re-engage with my art is when i realize okay i should take a look at this and stand back and oh yeah it's working and then go back in and then go back and like i usually have you know some quiet music on in the background that uh that i'm just getting into or whatever but a lot of it is um 
like at least for me, I mean, every artist is different, but I, uh, I very rarely am thinking about the actual art piece as much as I'm thinking about everything else in my life. Right. Yeah. And again, it baffles me that your mind can do that. Mm -hmm. I just think it's such a gift. It's such a gift for all of us mm -hmm. that you can do that and that artists do that. You know, when Lewis, sorry, I always go back to Lewis. Yeah, it's, 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 this is like, we might as well just have talk about, this is the Lewis the Wall <laughs> podcast. Um, and he'll never listen anyway. Like he's, <laughs> he loves podcasts. So yes, he will listen. He might listen. Yeah. If we tell him his name, he's on here a bunch of times. When I, when I watch him paint and, and sometimes our comedians, cause he's painting live yeah. at our show and the comedians will jump in and start saying, and, and he says he loves it whenever they interact with him and they kind of, they'll tease him. I mean, the one guy this year was like, you want mushrooms, man? Like, <laughs> and sometimes we think he is. Um, <laughs> um, but I, part of me is like, oh, maybe you shouldn't talk to him because his concentration will get blown. But he's like, no, this is great. Talk to me all you want. Like, you know. Well, and he's been doing those for a long time. Right. Too, so he's, right. he's got a whole, uh, you know, he, and everybody thinks, oh, he, he's, you know, he doesn't get any anxiety over it. But I, I know I, I've been around him getting ready for these things. He's He's, he's got to think a lot. He's, yeah. He, like there's a lot of prep that goes into Absolutely. it. Absolutely. But there's definitely, um, I mean, I shouldn't speak for him because I don't know exactly what goes through his mind. But uh but, you know, I think that um, you're guided by the brush a lot of times mm -hmm. where you, you, you could do one brush stroke that could um, could ruin the, the artwork or give you a whole new direction you got to follow because it, it's kind of guided. It's, it's almost like life, you know, like sure. you, you, you come in with a plan, but but, um, you know, something will happen. And you have to you have to be ready to bounce. And, mm -hmm. and uh, Lewis is really good at bouncing. And I think most artists are because well, I would say you are, too. Yeah, like, well, you well, have to. You be. have to be. Yeah, I think that's uh, like it. it, it you know, as an event planner for what I do, like almost every event has a problem. It's, it's almost guaranteed, guaranteed you're going to have a problem. So if if you your, your goal is to not let people see the problem, that's the key, yeah. right? Whatever is what it's like the duck. Everything seems pretty good on the surface, but those feet are going. That's yeah. what an event is. Yeah, exactly, and that's what an art piece is. Like, well, like let's talk about your events. Let's talk about about uh, what you've created and why you created it. Okay, yeah. Well, so so the, I mean, the whole reason I started Night of Artists was just just simply to create a another avenue for artists to show their work um, because, you know, it's tough to get into a gallery. Um, it's just, it, you know, there's only a certain amount of galleries even open now and, and uh, artists need a place to show their work. So, um, and I wanted to try to do it in a way that, that, that uh, took away that intimidation factor like we were talking about. The Relentless Podcast is brought to you by You Can Use Services, which I am very proud to be a part of. You Can Use Services is an organization that helps young people move out of harm's way and onto a path of economic independence. If you want to learn more about the incredible work that we do with some very vulnerable young people, please go to www.youcan.ca. That's www.youcan.ca. So I, I started doing these events. Um, I, first, I, I started just in St. Albert. Then I expanded to Grand Prairie because I was playing hockey up there. Yeah. Then I, uh, I, I eventually, um, <clears throat> I kept, I, you know, I, I, I would fly out to these places. I, I lost a, a ton of money doing this. It was like this. Mm -hmm. It was completely a passion-driven project because I, I, you know, back then we didn't. First of all, we didn't have the technology we do now for communicating. No Zoom. No, no, even texting back then. Um, and I, I hated talking to people on the phone. So I'd have to go to places like Toronto, Ottawa, Vancouver, Victoria, and I'd have to go there and meet with artists in person to try to tell them what I want to do and how I want to do this project where I needed to create a team that I could work with that could create an art show in their community where I won't be there the whole time, but I'll be, I need a, I need a captain kind of of the team there that will create what I need created. And, um, but I, I needed to meet them in person because over the phone, I, I just don't feel they could get my vibe. Sure. I really, I really wanted to have that connection. But maybe they wouldn't get the, the, the vision of what you wanted to do. Exactly. And, yeah. and I really, I, I needed them to know that I was genuinely wanting to help their career. Um, and, and, and wasn't just a, some guy trying to charge money to, to, to take a bunch of cash home bit back to Edmonton kind of thing. Um, and I, I almost did it to, to uh, a fault because that's why I was, like the I, financially it was a horrible exercise for me. I, I lost so much money. Right. I, I did so many bad deals and, and artists. Uh, there were artists that, um, that took advantage of me. Um, hmm. You know, you kind of learn that uh, sometimes being strong is, is uh, or, or not being as, 
as much of a pushover. I, I, I was very much a, a pushover thinking I was helping people, but sometimes people just know um, if you're a pushover, you're easy to take advantage of too. Sure. And, uh, and I, it was, I literally went through a school of hard knocks for probably 10 years, losing thousands. Basically I had to, uh, I had to cash in all my RSPs, everything to just to keep afloat. Um, and for some reason kept doing that, which was uh, not even like my parents to this day probably would, would still go, I don't know why you even kept going because, uh, um, they never, they never bailed me out as far as giving me any cash to help me out, but they, they did help me, <laughs> help me get a loan so I could sure. pay off my debt. But, um, uh, but it was, it was just something that, that I just, I just felt so strongly about. And, um, you know, I guess back to the relentless, the relentless thing, it was just, I was just so determined that because I could see, I could see the, the, the good in it. Um, unfortunately I was, I was making so many bad business decisions and, and, uh, not, I, I was thinking more of the, the people side of things and not enough of the business side You're of thinking things. with your heart weight, way more than your head maybe absolutely and that's exactly what it was and, and which, uh, which passion can do to people yep it, it uh, can and 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 it took one artist one time to to tell me you know she was in in one of my events she goes um you know we're only going to be successful if you're successful if you're if you're failing trying to make us succeed then then this is never going to go anywhere that's pretty smart yeah and then i was like going geez i never even thought about that like i Cause here I was, I was always floundering, like always. And, and then, uh, after she said that, I go, I got to look at this differently, mm -hmm. you know? It, so then what changed? What did you do to change it? <laughs> what changes did you make? Well, well, the, the truth be told, I got married. Um, mm. yeah. Yeah. Cause, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I got married and, uh, like a lot of the decisions I was making was based on, oh, if this, if this falters, I can fix myself. I sure. know. I know. I can uh, build myself back. I up can again. live on crackers, <laughs> which I would. <laughs> it was, it's literally the starving yeah. artist idea, right? Yeah. Exactly. Like when you when you talk about that, that's what I. I just really believe that whatever happens, I'm going to be able to survive. I, I know how to survive. Um, but then I got married, and then I had kids, and and uh, <laughs> uh, when I got married, like I, I like literally, I was my income was like fifteen thousand dollars a year. And my, my wife, uh, was still a, a student. So we were, we were, and she was like, yeah, this, you, you, <laughs> that's exactly. You gotta like, step up, babe. <laughs> you gotta, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I remember, um, at the time I was also working, uh, with Lewis and Paul Lavoie on mural mosaic. Yeah. And, uh, and that was like, it was just brand new. Basically it was, well, not it'd been going for 10 years, but it wasn't like a, a steady paying gig either. So, um, so, you know, I, one day I, I, I came home from, uh, from working at the studio and, uh, and Amy says to me, she goes, uh, I just want to let you know, you just applied for a job. <laughs> I was like, what? She says, I just applied for a job for you. You're, 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 you're going to go work for Canada post. <laughs> and I was like, I am. Oh, wow. She says, yeah. Like we, 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 we can't survive on, on what you're making. So, you know, you gotta go, you gotta go take this job. And I was like, oh, okay. And uh, you know, at first I was like going, oh. You know, all my dreams are just going to get crushed, and, and I have to go work at a. Because I hadn't been, at, I, I'd left my job at the city of Edmonton um, probably about five years before I met Amy. Yeah. Um, and I did not want to go back to the nine to five sure. racket, and and here I was. Now I'm going to. <laughs> so I so I went and I I did the training, and um, you know, and and got I was all set to deliver packages at, at Christmas time, and it was. And then, uh, then I told her, you know, if I, if I start working here, I'm going to be gone from, from six in the morning till probably eight or nine at night. So I won't even see the kids and you're going to be on your own all that time. And, uh, uh, like, I don't know, like uh, we'll be making a lot more money, but, but we won't, uh, I won't be seeing you or the kids much. And was she like, that's fine. We're going to be able to eat. Nope. <laughs> no, you know, no. And this, this is where I realized how, how, uh, uh, how life in, in our world worked is, is that it had nothing to do with the money. I right. mean, as long, and she would even say, as long as we got a roof over her head and food on the table, we're good. That's right. And, uh, cause, cause she didn't want to, like, she said she could go back to work and said, no, no, you, you, you want to be home with the kids. And I was like, yeah, yeah. I, I love that you want to be home with the kids. And, um, and she said, are you okay? I said, are you okay with me then just making what I'm making? I, I'm going to work, I'll work harder, smarter, but, but, uh, you know, let's just keep doing what we're doing and, and let's believe it's going to work out. And, uh, and in the long run, it did. And it was, uh, um, it was, it was all about the kids. Like we, I never, I've never made a lot of money and I'm not gonna, <laughs> I, you know, it's never been about that for us. No. And, and, um, you know, I, I, I've always found ways to get by 
uh amy was a person that was um uh phenomenal at you know buying and selling on swap pages and everything like mm. the money she made us just by <laughs> reusing she knew things how to that, budget oh yeah it was, she knew it was how to remarkable deal yeah you know we'll, we're gonna get back to you we're gonna we're gonna finish i think with your stuff but can can is it okay if we swing over right now to amy and sure. and uh uh something that you're working on right now because of of your situation in life are you okay to speak of that yeah let's give it a go yeah <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Tell me about Amy. Tell me. Uh, I love that you said, well, I got married and the importance of Amy in your life. But maybe talk about what happened to Amy. Well, okay. Well, I mean, first of all, I'll just say that, that uh, you know, new responsibility changes priority in life. Like my, my priority before, uh, before Amy was, I was, my family was my art community. And I just really wanted to create something that made my art community successful. And, and it gave me a passion and and that's something I could really focus on. And, and uh, uh, I was going into my 40s and I wasn't married yet and a series of bad relationships and just bad choices, whatever. Um, almost was conceding to the fact that I wasn't ever going to be married. And then Amy came along and, and uh, not only did I get married, but I, I, I had two kids follow up right after that. We're at a time where I thought that I was only going to inherit somebody's else, somebody else's children in my life. Sure. So sure. Um, so it was like this, this um, miracle to me. Um, to have that happen. And, um, so when, when all these life decisions started coming along, I mean, the most important thing to me is my wife and kids. So that's when I changed my focus, it was like, um, you know, it was almost like this, this God given thing to, to me where, where, where it was like going, if you focus on this, I'll reward you with, with the rest of the stuff. And, uh, um, and life just took off. Um, <laughs> so so things just kept um you know life just got better and better like it was like the um the best time of my life um my art shows uh my art my art show started taking off um my mural company with lewis and paul started doing amazing things and then um it was like it was like everything that you're supposed to get and um and then uh, thanks and then uh then at the peak of everything uh like around 2018 like we had i had the best year of my life like uh, uh we were just wrapping up a, a big national mural project all across the country painting with 80,000 people um my night of artist shows were were at a peak my my that that year uh amy and i saw all of canada with the kids um uh we we got offered a a trip to hawaii by a friend and um we still had to pay for a chunk of it and i didn't really have the money to go but i said if we don't go i'm missing an opportunity so we just took off and went and, and we just did everything in a year it was like most remarkable year and uh and then thankfully i did because the next year um we were shocked to find out Amy was diagnosed with lung cancer. And, um, um, and, uh, this went from the best year, year to the, to the hardest year. And, uh, um, but, 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 you know, it was one of those things where you just don't know what's coming around the corner next. And, uh, um, we seized every opportunity in that 2018, that uh that we were ready for for the new battle of of 2019 and uh mm. so it was um it was a shock it was horrible and amy was a um uh an ultra runner she would run 50 kilometers uh wow. <laughs> i would i would follow her with my car and pick her up and because i i was not a runner yeah um and she was a super mom and uh so when this happened it was like it was like how is this even possible um and you know and, and the odds of her survival were low it, but she just believed that she was going to beat it and she she took her story quite public and um she started a campaign for uh she would do 58 lunges every day for uh for the 58 people that that um die daily in canada from lung cancer and she got me to to joint washington so she got me i i just figured i should support her and, and yeah. uh 
So I started doing that with her as well. And we would do that every day through her treatments. And she would, she would bike to her chemo and radiation and, and run to them. And like, she was just determined that she was not going to, uh, going to let this cancer take her. And, um, unfortunately, um, her battle only lasted about nine months and she passed away in February of, of, uh, 2019. And, um, um, yeah, it still still seems so hard to believe because she was only 38 years old when she passed away, and and, uh, um, and there I was with um, with myself and the six year old and eight year old uh, trying to figure out how to how to start a new life again. Yeah. So yeah, Phil, I'm I'm so sorry for your loss. Well, thank you. Um, Amy sounds like she was just an incredible, incredible human being, and. I know that in talking yesterday, we, we talked for quite a while yesterday, mm. and uh, I just appreciated our conversation so much. And and um, I don't understand your your pain or your grief, but um, understanding grief a little bit, I, I uh, I'm amazed by you. I'm amazed that um, well, in some ways, you had you had no choice. You, you got two little ones, a six year old and an eight year old. You know, dad just can't quit. That's right. Yeah. And um, the way you talk about your kids and, and uh, put a big smile on my face yesterday when you were talking about them and, and how they're doing and, and, and how you guys are working hard to somehow move forward without Amy. Mm -hmm. But I know that um, you've started an initiative mm -hmm. um, in Amy's name. Mm -hmm. And I would love for you to be able to tell us about that, if that's okay. Well, while Amy was, uh, was going through her treatments, um, you know, it was quite often she'd be sitting and like, she, she was with this kind of person that no matter what was going on in her life, she'd walk in and be smiling and she'd talk to everybody. Like, uh, that was just her nature. I'm, I'm the kind of, I was kind of a shy guy that would just kind of blend into the furniture where she, she walks in and she's going to, she's going to make somebody's day. She's going to own the room. She's going to own the room with a big smile and, and she'll get people talking. And, uh, uh, she would talk to so many families that were waiting for treatments and such about how they were, they were coming, uh, from places like uh, like Grand Prairie, Fort McMurray, whatever, and they'd have to come in and find hotels to and, and go through treatments, or they're coming from even places like Barhead or you know a little bit closer, but they have to drive in, get radiation, then drive back home again. And, and um, she said that when she beat her cancer, that we're gonna st we're gonna we're gonna get some kind of a, a apartment or something for the kids to or for the for the families to uh, to stay at, so they don't have to. Because when, when Amy's going through her treatments, like like we were talking with you and your family there, um, it's amazing the support you can get yeah, in the community. Incredible. Yeah, like I, I really believe there's so much good in this world that, yeah. that uh, we, we focus on the negative too much. But um, we had so much support. And, and if there was any way we could pay that forward and, and uh, give that to somebody else, uh, that's what she wanted to do. Unfortunately, she wasn't able to beat her cancer. But um, coincidentally, right after um, she passed... Uh, uh, the house where we, it was a house that I had lived in for almost 20 years that I, uh, my dad had bought off my uncle and, uh, it had been take, taken over by a friend of mine who was now renting it out to other people. And he'd, he'd been renting it out for almost, oh gosh, just about 10 years, I guess. And, um, uh, r the house had never been vacant and right at, right when, uh, after Amy passed the house became vacant. So I asked my, my, one of my best friends here that, I said, you know, what are the odds we could turn this house into Amy's house? Because, uh, um, you know, we, we started our kids. We, first two kids were born into this house. And um, it'd be kind of neat to turn this into a, a, a special home for place. Cancer. Yeah. So um, it didn't even take any uh, any convincing for this. Um, right away, he said, absolutely, let's do it. So uh, so we we uh, took the house and, and renovated a bit so it would, uh, you know, work with families that, that needed it for what we were trying to create it for. And by uh, Amy's uh, 39th birthday, uh, September of 2019, just six months after she had passed or whatever it was, and we opened up this house. And mm -hmm. um, and we've had the house full of uh, families ever since. And uh, this this upcoming weekend, uh, sorry, I should say the April, I guess April 15th, um, we are we are opening the second house, which wow. which happens to be right next door to the first house. So wow! So the house came available. We we managed to, to secure it, and um and we're 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 gonna be able to help twice as many families now. So it's, that's incredible. It's pretty exciting. Yeah. What a way to honor Amy. Yeah, it's been it's been a uh, my kids um 
they designed the logo for the house. They, <laughs> they, they came over when we were renovating the house. They, they started drawing on the, on the sidewalk, Amy's house and, and oh, drew all wow. So I said, you know what, let's make that the logo. So I took a picture of them with the, with what they had drawn on the sidewalk chalk and, and, uh, um, and they helped renovate the house and, and the, the home for that, like to me, like we, we, we talk about Amy every day and, and the house just gives us more reason to say her name over and over. Um, and that the kids talk about Amy, the time we shared everything, it's always a positive thing in our, yeah. in our home. Yeah. And, um, and even the whole, the, the volunteering of people coming out to the house became like this, um, this healing structure sure more so than anything sure it, an absolute labor of love absolutely yeah and it was it was wonderful like you know people would be in the house in tears but they're happy yeah yeah it was pretty pretty powerful yeah thank you for sharing that yeah thanks and, thanks for letting me talk about it <laughs> and well um a- a- amy was obviously just this amazing human being and that could light up anything and, and she let up your life and, and your kids lives and the lives of many and, and i love that that you guys have decided because of amy because of amy wanting this but that you you kept going with it mm-hmm. for amy's house how can people support that can you know what i mean like do you guys have a, a website do you guys yep. yeah like, yeah yeah well, can well, people donate to it what is that yeah well we we, we um we we were non-profit just switching to a charity uh okay. it's amy's house.ca okay. uh yeah, there, there's, we are always accepting donations. We do a um, we do a run in Amy's name. She was a because she's an avid trail runner. We uh, we do a run through the River Valley. It's a there's there's um, a five kilometer event for the the average Joe, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then there's a, a serious um, fifty or forty kilometer trail run for the for teams and and serious runners. Wow. Um, and 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 I in my Night of Artists event now. Um, which I actually was going to stop after Amy had uh, had passed away, just because I I just didn't have the same enthusiasm for it. Um, it's now been resurrected, and uh, because I can use it now to raise funds for the house, so mm. so uh, that will be those are our two major events. Yeah, and then just ongoing <laughs> donations yeah. kind of thing. So yeah, well, we ask people to go to that website, and by all means, support. Um, it really is an incredible story, and and. Um, you know, when I think of the word relentless and I think of you as an artist and, and the things that you've had to, to go through as an artist, um, I love that, that you said, you know, I said, well, what changed? You said, I got married, you know. Um, Amy was relentless too mm-hmm. and supporting your passion and your love for art, which I think is incredible. Mm-hmm. And now with Amy's house and this other stuff, you're you're relentless with that too because you have to be. Mm-hmm. You know, I know running a charity, you have to be. Um, momentum has to continue all the time, all the time, right? And I just wish you nothing but the best with Amy's house. Um, Art wise, w- w- you're, you're still doing Night of Artists, mm-hmm. and then what else are you doing? What else are you involved with? Well, that's uh, so so. <laughs> As the paintbrush gets put onto the canvas, and and you 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 don't know what's going to happen next. Uh, like I literally had done my last night of artist show last year, and um, uh, it was in, at the Saint Albert and Joy Center. I I'd re- I was ready. I didn't announce it publicly, right. but anybody close to me knew that I was done. Um, uh, then late fall last year, I, I got contacted by a a, a a woman who works for for um, all these shopping malls across Alberta kind of thing who I hadn't spoke to in 20 years. And she, uh, she reemerged and said, Hey, would you like to open up a gallery it, or something to do with the arts in, in Bonnie Dune center? And I was like, Nope, <laughs> right off the bat. I was like, no, nope, I do not want to do that. I don't want to get into a, a business and start running a business and, and doing something like that. I I'm, I'm kind of fading out of what I'm doing. I'm, I'm going to try to go back to do my art. Cause I really haven't done any of my own art probably for, for probably 10 years. Oh, wow. Cause I've been either, either working for, for mural mosaic, promoting that or, or doing my night of artist stuff. Sure. You've been basically facilitating things for other artists yeah. to do their work. Yeah. Like everything that has started, the whole purpose of what I started was to promote my own artwork. But in the end it became, my artwork was secondary. I haven't even done any artwork really. And so I was going to go back to that. Um, but then this opportunity came along and she said, come check out the space and then tell me no after you look at the space. So I went and looked at the space in Bonnie Dune Center, and I was like, "Oh man, it, it's like 
uh, ever since I was, a, I was like in my early 20s, I dreamed of having a space that I could have as an entertainment venue slash gallery. It, it had a door to the exterior of the mall so I could operate the events outside of mall hours sure. and things like that. And uh, <clears throat> and she made me a really sweet offer that I just couldn't refuse. And I said, okay, I'll take it on and, and we'll give it a go. And um, and then after I started doing it, then my, uh, my passion returned. It was a kind of a passion that I had lost uh, on a lot of levels. Mm. Uh, I think because my passion went from went from uh, the arts to my family. Like, uh, sure. like when you lose your wife and, you know, my kids are number one focus. Sure. And then uh, all my energy just, I, I tried to reignite energy elsewhere and I just couldn't do it. And, and grief is exhausting. It is exhausting. You wake up with it it's and it's exhausting. there. You go to bed with it, it's, it's there. there. It just doesn't go away. And uh, it uh, it can shift around a bit, but, sure. you know. It's have, exhausting. Yeah. Yeah. It's exhausting. So, uh, um the opportunity ar- arose and, and um, I stepped into it and, and uh, the only way it was going to work is if I was supported by the arts community mm-hmm. and the, the support I got was unbelievable. I go, wow, I guess I sh- I'm, I'm maybe I'm supposed to do this. And, and uh, so then uh, now I'm operating this gallery uh, completely different than what I had done in the past. And then, then uh, as I'm talking to the mall, there were wonderful people at Bonnie Dune center. They're really open to new ideas. I said, well, what if we, what if we turn this mall into a gigantic ballroom and create a, a an art walk throughout the mall for three days and then have a party in the in the mall? Shut down all the stores and have a big party. And they're like, "Oh, that's so crazy!" But it might work. And yeah, and, uh, like, yeah well, let's, let's give it a go. So uh, so we partnered up and we did that this past um, March. And it was the like honestly, I've, I've probably done close to 250, 270 events in my lifetime, and and it was like all roads led to this like oh, wow it was like the um like even even the things that i thought were uh were not going to work right worked i've never had an event like it where where everything like the the artists were successful the the we raised valuable funds for amy's house yeah. um the the problems i thought that i would have didn't happen and in fact the the problems that i thought were for sure problems turned into one of the one of the best things in the event That's amazing and um and it just it just gave me uh new energy you know on a lot of levels and uh and i hadn't felt that in in well since probably since amy was diagnosed and, sure. and uh um and and i just think it was just everything positioned the way it was meant to be for a moment that i needed in yeah. my life my kids were my kids were at the event my my daughter was was butlering food around giving nice. it out to people my son was going around drinking coke all night long yeah. like a like a cocaholic yeah nice <laughs> nice they just had it was like such a it, it was like the the it was like the kids just love night of artists because Amy loved night of artists too. She loved coming and dressing up and just having a nice night. So it was, yeah. it was kind of like there it was, it was like this, this perfect party to, to kind of um, reignite my, my passions again. And, uh, um, and, and the, my art community was so amazingly supportive. It was, it was really, I, I, I don't know. Like I, I honestly, anytime I have an event, I'm always for the, for like two or three weeks afterwards, I'm always thinking about, Oh, I should have done this or I should have done that or, why did that not work? This is the first time I've walked out of it. We're going, ah, you know, this just was meant to be. It yeah. just, it just felt so good. So, it so perfect. Yeah. 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 I, I hate, I hate even using the word perfect, but if there was a perfect night, there was, that, that was, that was probably as close to it as it could have been. So congratulations on that. Yeah. Thank and, you. And I love hearing that. Thanks. And, um, I love hearing that your passion is ignited again. Um, acknowledging that that doesn't mean you're better it doesn't mean that you know what i'm saying it doesn't mean like hey i mean the saying that you and i talked about a little bit yesterday was this this where people say oh you just got to move on yeah yeah never going to move on no right but but i think you move forward you don't move move forward and i think what you're doing um as as a good husband um as a good dad is you're you're moving forward and you're carrying amy with you and and it's incredible it is um i'm very inspired by you <laughs> I am, and I think you're a humble guy, but I want you to receive that. I, I mean it sincerely. Well, thanks. Um, I'm inspired by you. I, I, you, you're an extraordinary guy, and and your life has has been extraordinary. And I, I love I've loved listening to the story, and and I actually think we could sit here all day long mm. and talk about your life, which I think is amazing, and. I thank you for sharing it um, and, and the hardest part of your life. I thank you for sharing that. But I do believe that um, 
you know, as, as you're inspired to keep going here, that it's going to, it's going to bring wonderful and beautiful things to, to many lives. Um, I don't see any silver linings in, in my grief, to be honest with you. Like I don't, I don't right now. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, but I do believe that some things can happen that can be good as we move forward. And that's what's happening for you. So I think it's amazing. You're a relentless man. <laughs> well, I'll give you a silver lining that you, you are, you are talking about it. And, and that is, you're helping me and you're helping others. So I, I, I mean, uh, it, it's, it's tough. It's so tough and, and uh, it's not going to fix anything, but, but just, just the fact that you're here inviting me to talk about it is, is a silver lining. So well, I'm glad yeah. because I think we need to talk about it. Yeah, you're you know? right. And yeah. I think that we need to be okay to talk about it publicly too. That's my take. It's not everybody's opinion. Um, but I think, I think if we share our stories, uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly, um, I think it can help people. Absolutely. You know, and that's my hope on this podcast. So, yeah. so you've done that today. It's, it's, we've had some fun. Um, we've had some tears and, uh, I hope that people know a little bit more about how an artist brain works. Cause I still don't know. I, you know, you didn't explain it well. For me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I don't know how it works <laughs> either, which I think is so cool. <laughs> I really do think it's amazing. So this is how we're going to end this podcast. I'm trying to do this with podcast. It's called the Relentless uh, Quiz, and <clears throat> it is scientific. Uh, this is going to prove how relentless of a person you are, Phil. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. Yep. Okay. You got to think about these questions. All right. Fruits or vegetables? <laughs> uh, fruits. All right. City or countryside? Oh, such a in between uh countryside okay dirty bathroom or dirty kitchen dirty bathroom okay salty or sweet salty it's so interesting so many people say fruits and then they go to salty <laughs> so interesting to me favorite comedy movie of all time comedy movie Ah, uh, oh boy. I might have to think about that one. Um, <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. If uh, that's, uh, I'm putting you on the spot here. Uh, I'm just trying to, uh, I might have to take a pass on that okay. for a second while I take think. A pass. People know, people know you're not funny. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Big, that's not true. That's not true. <laughs> Big party or small gathering? Uh, small gathering. Okay. Phone in the bathroom or not in the bathroom? Oh, not in the bathroom. Oh. All right. Favorite love song of all time? Uh, the Dance. It's a great song, man. Cake or pie? Pie. Last question. Describe your relentless <laughs> podcast experience in four words. Uh, emotional... Uh, inspiring, comfortable, and important. Phil, you are all those things. <laughs> you have passed the quiz. <laughs> you are relentless. <laughs> I thank you so much. I thank you for your gift of art that you have given the world. Thank you. Uh, you didn't have to, but you've chosen to. And I thank you for that. Um, I thank you for your heart. And I thank you that uh, we didn't even talk about this. And when you refereed me when I played house league <laughs> hockey, uh, we don't think you kicked me out of a game. Probably should have. Yeah, probably. But, but we don't think you did. So thank you for that. <laughs> but I do remember the penalties. So. Yes, there was a lot. A lot of sitting in that soup kitchen. There was a lot. Um, I appreciate you so much. I phoned Rob Lawlisher yesterday. You and I had a little pre-pod interview yesterday. And we actually talked for a long time. And... Um, I, cause I don't think we had actually met before. I think maybe if we met, it was in passing here and there, but, but, um, and Rob, uh, Lawsher, the owner of road 55, he said, listen, you got to get Phil Elena. And of course I had heard of you. I knew of you. And I texted him immediately after we got the phone. I said, I think I just fell in love with Phil. <laughs> it, it was such an, a beautiful conversation. And today was as well. I appreciate you. Where can we find you? Um, so where can we find Amy's house? The website is amyshouse.ca amyshouse.ca and then uh, 
uh, nightofartist.com is uh, that's where you'll get information for the gallery and, and all the events that we are, are putting on and uh, and I'm still working with um, Lewis at Mural Mosaic Lewis and Paul Lavoie so and they're, they're doing some amazing things right now um, muralmosaic.com I think people should check that out too so. Phil thank you so much I appreciate it thank you really appreciate your time and I almost feel like we it would have been just as much fun having you talk as, and hearing your story at the same time. It's not that great. Trust me. <laughs> Trust me. All right. I appreciate it. Take care, brother. Thank you. You too. Okay.